reading from Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark 10. Mark 10. Mark 10. Fire and fury. Somebody say fire and fury. Fire and fury. Mark 10. And we are reading from verse 17. Mark 10. And I am in verse 17. And we're going to read all the way down, I believe, to uh, 30, if we have time for that. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why? Do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not be a false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. And said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at his word, at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Somebody say, Great possession. Great possession. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they greatly, and they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Somebody say, all things. All things. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one. Somebody say, there is no one. There is no one, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the Gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now, in this time, houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mother, and mothers, actually, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first, will be the last. And the last will be first. The last first. Somebody say, I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above and not below. I will be above and not below. I shall not be pitied. I refuse to be pitied. I am who God says I am. I will do what God says I will do. I will accomplish what God says I will accomplish. Now touch three people and say, I believe everything I have said. 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 I have believed and therefore I have spoken. I believe and therefore I have spoken. Now 
Now this story is about the rich young ruler. And the Bible says that he ran to Jesus. Somebody say, run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Don't run to man. Don't run to man. Don't run to government. Don't run to brother. Don't run to, Don't run to, Don't run to sister. Don't run to, Don't run to father. Don't run to, Don't run to mother. Don't run, to run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Now, when he came to Jesus Christ, he knelt down. He knelt down. Meaning he was serious about what he was asking. He was serious about what he was about to ask Jesus. So he knelt down. Meaning also that he was a respecter of Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. He knew Jesus has the answer. So he knelt down and said, teacher, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit, to inherit eternal life? And meanwhile, <laughs> he is or he was a businessman. So he, he saw Jesus passing by. He took advantage of the time. He knew that if he missed that opportunity, it might take a long time for Jesus to pass by again. So when he saw him passing by, he ran. But eventually he crosses before he gets there. We live in the age of I don't have time. We, this is a generation of I don't have time. This is a generation of drive through. This is a, a this is this is a Snapchat generation. This is a microwave generation. This is the this is this is a skip the dish generation. That's right. yeah, this is the this is the generation of pizza. Give it to me now when it is hot. I I, I don't have time. Okay. And he took that advantage. People of God, for you to know him. You cannot find him in the drive-thru. <laughs> you, the Bible says he called his disciples to himself. That, that he might send them out as witnesses. And the Bible says that John the Baptist was in the desert. Up until the time of his manifestation. Now, we are a generation that skip desert. But unfortunately, we still come back to the desert. Because you cannot break the rank and the order, the structure of the kingdom. You must be tested and be trusted before you will be manifested. Somebody shout, Pastor, hear you. There is something in this church today that, that you will not go home the same. No, 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 you will not go home the same. I really feel like running, but, but I said you will not go home the same. me so quickly. 
they will not have been so fast and quick to condemn me. No one is good. Say it with me. No one is good. No one is good. And Jesus says, you know the commandments. You know the commandments. The number one thing Jesus said was, do is, the word of God is, always is. Do not commit adultery. Why? Why would it be number one? Why wouldn't honor your father and your mother be the first one? It's because sexual immorality, adultery, and fornication is a destroyer of destiny. That's right. Is, is, a, is a cancer of destiny. A crime, an attack, an attack. The Lord sent me here today to anger Satan. Yes. The Lord anointed me today and has sent me to provoke Satan to anger, yes. to strip him naked. Yes. The sexual immorality is the killer or one of the killers of giants. There are great men is happening in America. There are great men that have been flawed and flawed forever. Right. It doesn't matter whether you are the bishop or the pope. That's right. It doesn't matter whether you are millionaire or billionaire or trillionaire or zillionaire. If you are a fornicator or an adulterer, your destiny is bastardized. You know you, you know you grow to a certain age that you don't fear again. Mm -hmm. eh? So no, no man called me. No man is me. God called me and anointed me, right. and I have come to please Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So be very wary of fornication. Mm -hmm. Be wary of adultery. Is uh, now people people don't even commit it with people. People commit it with telephone. People commit it with tablets. That's right. People commit it with laptops. People commit it. We are, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't happen anymore. It does, but it, it's happening more now in in the digital world than it is happening in the physical world. And if you are watching me over there in the internet and you feel like you are stuck in the middle with pornography. Now, can I tell you something about pornography, church? Pornography is a mind twister. Right. Pornography is the, is, the, is, the, is the crack cocaine of sexual addiction. It, there is nobody who, who is involved or hooked into pornography that can become anything in life. Who is not 
watching it. Affects your brother who is not watching it. Affects every member of your family. Affects them in a way that you don't even know. And it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you become anything. I can help you. If you're watching me anytime, anywhere, please reach us. Reach Power Mind International TV. Reach Power Mind International Ministries website. I can help you. I am not Jesus, but I believe Jesus will use me to help you. Amen. So I shall hallelujah. hallelujah. Now I will leave it there. And he mentioned other things. And he says, and he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have done since I was youth. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. <coughs> eh? <coughs> what does that tell us? It tells us that he was a man of discipline. He was a disciplined man. Somebody said discipline. discipline. He was a disciplined man. man. People of God, you can live a life of discipline. Amen? Amen. You can live a disciplined life. You can say, at the end of this month, I will save five dollars. And this five dollars, I will never touch it. And you put it in your savings account. You can say, this stink of secret, I will never smoke it. And I will never go along with anybody that smoke. You can say as well, this alcohol, I will never drink you. My mother came home one Sunday, one Saturday Sunday, and we were all hungry when we were growing up. And she went straight to bed. Unlike her, we were waiting for food in bed. My mother was sleeping. And the following morning, she called me into her bedroom. And she said, I can see her. So I found her. She said to me, this body belongs to me. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, it belongs to me. And she said to me, this body will not tell me what to do. I said, yes, ma'am. You will never. You will. She said, do you know last night, we went for the meeting, and they gave me a bottle of beer. And I drank it. And I didn't know what the whole world was saying. <laughs> and I came back and I passed out. Oh, my goodness. Since that day, the woman never drank again. <laughs> so much of discipline. So I shall. Hallelujah. In the same way, you can discipline. You see, the, the group that you find yourself, the, the, the association that you find yourself, determines how far you can go in life. Right. If you read verse 56, the Bible says, and he went to another village. Amen? And is it this one? I think in Luke, that's what it is. He went to another village. Sometimes you have to leave your village. If the platform you are in destroys, says negative things about churches, groups that you attach yourself to, destroy, destroy pastors, don't exit the group. Exit the group. Because if you don't exit, the Bible says that he that blessed are they that do not sit in the seat eh, of this comfort. If you don't exit, you are creating dangers for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody somebody called me. Say, Pastor, I, I actually sent me the, the, um, the YouTube uh, link. What uh, one man of God said, said about, about masturbation. I said, me, watch it. Listen to it. Who am I? I'm just starting. The man has branches all over the world. Me, I'm just, I, I didn't open it. I didn't say anything. Later on, another person called me. Said, Pastor, did you see that one bishop slapped a girl in his church? I said, me, what do you say about it, Pastor? I said, me, you want to kill me. What did I do wrong to you? Have I offended you since I came to Canada? <laughs> me, I will not talk about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, they said, oh, one apostle, uh, somebody accused, accused, accused him that, you know, did that, did that, doctor. What is, I said, me, talk about apostle. Me, 
No, I will not do that. Anybody that talks to you about your pastor likes your pastor and does not like you. And the other thing he's telling you about, or she's telling you about his or her own pastor, is everything good. And about your own pastor, is everything bad. Tells you that he has no clue, he has no single relationship with his pastor or her pastor. He sees her pastor from far, or she sees her pastor from far. One day with my brother, we were just driving, and among his friends, his friends began to talk about their wives. Oh, my wife did this. Oh, I did this with my wife. And all of a sudden, that gentleman began to contribute. And I said to him, what are you doing? What are you doing? That they are presenting their wives does not mean you should. And in fact, they are not your friends. Anybody that comes to you and says, your husband this, your husband that, no. Watch that woman. It could be she's interested in your husband. Oh, I didn't say anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, are we communicating today? Yes, Shout hallelujah if you believe. Hallelujah. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him and said, One thing you lack. One thing you lack. One thing you lack. Go your way. Now remember, Jesus didn't say, Go away. John 6 37. Jesus says, Anyone, everyone that God has given to me will come to me, and I will in no wise cast them away. away. Okay? Jesus didn't say, go away. And you cannot say to anybody that comes to you because of Jesus, go away. We don't do that. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, I don't do that. I don't do that. And then Jesus said, sell whatever you have. Sell whatever you have. He didn't have a problem with the number one, which is Go your way. And he didn't have a problem with number two, which is sell whatever you have. If you read it in Luke version, it says, sell all. He didn't have a problem with the number two. But it proceeded to number three, where Jesus says, and give to the poor. And give to the poor. Sell all you have and give to the poor. Now, that word rang Run separately in his heart. Sell all I have. Give to the poor. Sell all I have. Give to the poor. Sell all I have. Give to the poor. Now, because this word was written, he actually didn't even see what Jesus Christ said following that. Sell all I have. Give to the poor. Which poor? Are they not poor? Because they are lazy. Are they not poor because they don't work hard? Are they not poor because they are not educated? Are they not poor because they blew their chances? Are they not poor because they missed opportunities? They mismanaged opportunities? Are they not poor because they drink a lot? Are they not poor because they are smokers? Are they not poor because they are drunk addicts? How can I give my money to them? My heart any dollar. My heart any money. Give to the poor. I will do that. People of God. They are poor. Because life happens to them. It's not every homeless man you see on, on Winnipeg Street. That became poor because of alcohol. Or became homeless because he was a drug addict. Sometimes life happens. Life can happen to you, and all of a sudden, your credit, which is 800, will come down to 320. When life happens to you. I had a friend here. I met at the university, was doing a PhD in computer science. Excellent friend. Told me that he was so many, where we come from, or where we came from. Met second class offer. And he said to me, I don't know why he said that to me that day. 
He said to me, that's right. I used to be one of those who condemned students for failing. He said, because I never fail exams. I don't fail exams. I pass my exams very well. He said, but sometime, one day, or some season, I became so sick that I couldn't read. And when I went into the exam hall, I couldn't write. I fell. He said, since that day, he stopped. Sometimes life happens. Rise on your feet. And say, Father, Father, let positive things happen to me. Let positive life experience happen to me. The prayer now for a second as a prayer. In the name of Jesus. You may be sitting. Now, because he was already angry, he was already infuriated, he did not pay attention to the next word that Jesus said, which was actually the reason why he ran to Jesus in the first place, which was actually the reason why he, 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 he sought to see Jesus. He said, and you will have treasures in heaven. What is a greater treasure in heaven than eternal life? What is a better valuable treasure than anyone would, anyone would have except eternal life? Now, he was angry, and the Bible says, and Jesus says, come, and follow me. Come, take your rod. Now, the, Jesus added salt to injury by saying, come. Me, come. Me, rich, young ruler. I am rich. And on top of that, I am very young. And on top of that, I am a political figure. I'm a public figure. And then you said, me, come to you. And then follow you. Don't you see how many people are following me? How pride destroys. Pride destroys. Pride is number one enemy of any man's destiny. And he says, come, take your cross. Which cross? The reason why I worked so hard to get to where I am was because I saw my mother carry cross. I saw my father carry cross. And they could not even carry their cross. That's why I have worked hard and became wealthy, even as a young man. And Jesus says, when you have taken your cross, what is your cross, by the way? Responsibility. When you have taken your cross, follow me. Then Jesus, I heard that you fed 5,000. And in another instant, you fed 4,000. But I have employed people all over the world. I feed more than that every day. And you want me to follow you. Whatever he says you, whatever he asks you to do, do it. Somebody say, do it. do it. And the Bible says that he left and he was sad. I want to talk to us a little bit. Moment. Jesus' disciples were astonished. When Jesus says, it is difficult for a rich man to enter into the were astonished. Why were they astonished? They never really knew Jesus. They never knew him. First, one day Jesus, a young, handsome man, with beautiful hair, with fire in his eyes, came to the shore of a river and saw people who were washing their nets. Saw John and his brother and Zebedee, their father, and their servants, saw Peter, and he chose Peter to use his boat. And after that, he preached. And they were wow. They have never heard any man preach like that. They have never seen a young person in Israel with such power, with such glory, with such glamour, with such beauty, with such excellence. And they saw the glory of God upon him. And after he had preached, he told them, cast your nets to deep. Launch out and cast to the deep and lay down your nets and the deep, even though they had not caught anything. And when they obeyed, they caught so much fish that their boat boats began to sink. 
And Jesus said a word. Come. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. They didn't understand what fishers of men. They meant actually it could be another business opportunity. Amen? Because they never really knew who Jesus was. Do you know Jesus? Does anybody here know Jesus? By the way, the reason why I asked the question was because Jesus was revealed to Peter that he is the Christ. And Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church. For flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father in heaven. And a couple of minutes after that, when Jesus declared that he was going to Jerusalem to die, Peter took him by the side and said, why do you say you're going to die? You will not die. And Jesus rebuked him. He never knew. Jesus also said, Peter, you will deny me three times before the cock crow. And he did. And the people, the, the disciples of Jesus, after Jesus Christ rose from death, two of them were going to Emmaus, one not Cleopas, and the other person. And Jesus walked along with them and began to open the scripture. And then when he went into their house with them and broke the bread and gave them, and they recognized that it was him. He disappeared. They said, we are our hearts not burning with us. And the Bible says, when they saw Jesus the first time, and they were telling him, Jesus asked them, what is going on? He said, are you the only stranger in territory in Israel that, do, that does not hear or does not know what has happened in Israel in the past few days? He said, about what? He said, about Jesus of Nazareth, a mighty prophet, in word and in deed. Who was crucified and who was now, according to our people, now raised up. They said, they told us now that he is alive. He said, we thought that he, we hoped that he was the one who was going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Just a little bit of note right there that they never knew Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Amen. Do you know Jesus? The question the young man would have asked Jesus would have been, what is that one thing that I lack? What is that one thing that I lack? I tell you, every man lacks that one thing. But those who have found that one thing are the world changers. They are the people that Jesus Christ calls or refers to, the laborers. He says, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Now, what is that one thing that the man lacked? If you read verse 28 or 26, 27 rather, Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible. With men, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. With men does not mean with a human flesh. It means what all men struggle with. What all men struggle with. With. It is the same thing that the rich young man lacked. It is the same thing that made him walk away without obtaining the eternal life. What was that? Men lack total surrender to God. Men lack absolute commitment to God. It is a struggle between all men. But those who have overcome it, Apostle Paul says, one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. And then he said again, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And he said again, I purposed in my heart 
to seek for nothing but Jesus and him crucified. People who are totally surrendered to God change generations. People who are totally surrendered to God break generational curses. People who are absolutely committed and surrendered to Jesus are the world breakers. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And that was why his disciples were astonished when Jesus said what he said. They were astonished because believers think that we come to Jesus to be rich. No, we don't come to Jesus to be rich. Hello? Amen. We do not come to Jesus to be rich. Why? Because we are already rich. Amen. We come to Jesus to be saved. We come to Jesus to serve. We come to Jesus to preach. We come to Jesus that he may use us. People of God, you are not powerful and successful because of the big car you drive or the big house you live in. No. You are not powerful or successful because of your degrees, five degrees and three diplomas. No. You are successful because he has made you a son. For those that do receive him and do believe in his name, he has given the power to become. That was why he said, Master, what do I do? It is not a doing thing. It is a being thing. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word became flesh. The word didn't do flesh. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me. Thank you, Lord. So you know that it is the challenge of every man. If you read Luke chapter 9, from 57 to 62. Now, Jesus Christ, what was passing his way again? And one man ran to him and said, Lord, I will follow you. Just like we ran to him. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus says, foxes have holes, and birds have nests. In other words, the position of a fox is the hole. The position of a bird is the net. Coming to me, or running to Jesus, or coming to church, is not because of position. It's not because of, 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 of I, I, let me preach. I, I can preach. No. Or let me be the choir master. Or let me be the head usher. Or let me be this one. No, it's not a positional thing. It is a commitment thing. It costs a lot to be a pastor. It costs you, it will cost you everything to be a believer. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Like in Genesis, I thank God. In 2012, one early morning I was having my prayer. And the Lord said to me, go and roof that place. And before then, my wife and I had taken away 25000 from people of God. I have never touched that kind of money personally, for personal pay. We're taking $25,000 to, you know, to start a work here. And the Lord said to me, go and move that place. I said, Lord, I, what, do I do? what do I use to roof it? I don't have the money. He said, give whatever you have. I said, Lord, right here now, the only thing that we have that we can give is the bank. And that bank was a gift from somebody. The Lord said, give it. So we, I said, my wife is not here, but go and touch my wife. <laughs> so, she, <laughs> so she came back. I said, sweet, we are going to give the bank. I said, right on. May God bless you. Thank you. Aww. She said, give it. So we gave it. When we gave, that was, that was a, a, a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, we came here. 
an engineer drove by, did his measurement, did man, and then was about to walk out from that point, actually. And then he came back to me. He said, Pastor, I've been thinking about it. How about I give you, I give the church this van? He was driving a van that time. A master van. So instantly, we had two vans. And there was one member of the church who drove in as we were leaving that day. That day was a Bible story. The man came and we shared the testimony. He said, I will give 2,000. 2,200. Well, as we are leaving the site that day, my heart was exploding. When we got to the, when we got home, it was a Bible study. The teacher was there. We started thanking God. The Lord spoke to her and said, you are just thanking me for this one. He said, wait, something bigger is coming. The following day, Thursday, I was in my prayer room. A man was busting on the bed. Busting, 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 busting. My wife went and, and answered. It was the man that promised 2,200 the previous day. He came to me. My wife said, I'm praying. He's praying. He said, call him out. I, I came out. So he said, he was taking his shower. Sorry, church, do you have time for me to finish my testimony? He said, he was taking his shower last night. And the Lord spoke to him, go and roof that place. And he said, how much will it cost? I said, 8,000. He brought out his check on my kitchen counter and wrote the check, 8,000. People of God, it costs you everything. God bless Victoria. The van was gone. And we just entered a cold season. We had nothing. No car, no nothing. I have three children. God bless her. It was Victoria that would come and drive my children to school and drive them back until God moved. So it is not, it is not a positional thing. It is a commitment thing. Someone shout commitment. Commitment. Someone shout commitment. Commitment. Someone shout commitment. Commitment. And last week, or last two weeks, Thursday, I came to church because, you know, once in a while my wife is, is tired. So I, so I can't always be walking down to drop you off. And I kept asking people for, for right to bring me to church on Thursday. On the last two weeks, I came here and my, my heart was, was not happy. So I said, Lord, I need a car. Before then, the Lord told me, he said, I will give you a car. I said, Lord, I believe you. So on that particular Thursday, I was praying and my heart was bubbling. I stopped the prayer. I said, Lord, I need a car. He said, if I give you a car, other than the one you have requested for, would you take it? I said, Lord, why do I take it? He said, okay, call this number now. So I dialed the number. I switched my phone on and I dialed the number. It was a Toronto number. And the brother picked. And the brother didn't pick. The Lord said, he's going to call you back. Don't switch off your phone. So within two or three minutes, he called me back. The Lord said, go direct to the point. Tell him you need a car. So I said, brother, I need a car. And I, I need it just to bring me to church and take me home until I'm ready to buy my car. He said, pastor, you know what? On May 21, I made a vow to send something to you. But now that you have said it, I have a Tacoma truck in Nigeria that if it is sold, I will take part of the money and add it to what I already have vowed to send to you, and I will buy you a car. As he was saying, the Lord said to me, the Lord spoke in my heart, tell him that truck is sold. Mm. I hesitated. He wasn't hearing, I was the only one hearing. So the Lord said, say the truck is sold. So I said, brother, the truck is sold. He said, pastor, by the grace of God, I said, no. I said, say amen. <laughs> so I said it again. The truck is sold. So on Tuesday, in the morning hour. Church, do you have time? Like a little bit. Yes, sir. On Tuesday morning, he sent me WhatsApp text messages. He said, Pastor, congratulations. I have bought you the car. This is, this is the car. Hallelujah. He said, this is the picture. This is the picture. So, but the, I'm still believing God that the truck will be sold. The Lord taught me. He said, be careful of what you say. What comes out of your mouth right now? So I didn't go into... <coughs> Six hours later, he sent me another text. Pastor, the truck is sold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rise up and give him praise. Rise up and give him praise. Rise up and give him praise. I'll finish this message on Sunday. Rise up and give him praise. Shalabakata sukele braya. Zaka bakata.
Absolute commitment to God. Absolute commitment to God. Absolute commitment to God. Total commitment to God. Absolute commitment to God. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. To be committed. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. To be committed. Lord, help me. To be committed. Lord, help me. To be committed. Let every excuse be destroyed. Let every distraction be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted. In Jesus' name. Amen. Worship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in God's presence forever and ever.